test, test. Ooh, there we go. Thank you. Good morning. It's kind of like the beginning of the school year um, for, for us at church as well, or as Pastor Beth likes to say, it's game day. Um, and we open, we open this morning with a fresh theme for this year, which is until the story is told. Uh, some folks have asked me, what does that mean? Um, well, it's a nod to our faith in the word of God that lives and moves and breathes among us, told in sacred stories of ordinary people in the Bible and through ongoing stories of our lives and in our community, which are God's stories as well. This fall, our texts and our preaching are going to trace an arc of ordinary people who are often overlooked in the Bible, in our biblical narrative. And we will be making time in worship to share our own stories of faith um, as witnesses of God's love. Uh, and from the gallery of photos and writings of the Mount Olive community that opens today in the community room to a book study and classes that are available, there are so many different ways for you to connect, uh, be known, and share and receive your stories this fall. But last but not least, um, we are kicking off this new season and we are honored to welcome Joe Davis and Dave Scher, brilliant colleagues in ministry, spoken word artists and educators who are gonna help us engage this new theme um, and this new way, um, this new theme for the fall about sharing and receiving our stories. So thanks for being with us. And uh, with all of that goodness coming to us on kickoff Sunday, we worship God together and we begin now showing up exactly as we are um, and acknowledging the ways we've been living apart from relationship with God and with one another. So I, I invite us to confess and seek forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us. Jesus, who bears the cross, and the Spirit, who sustains us in all things. Steadfast and faithful God, we are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. You are part of God's story of redemption and grace. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing. <laughs>
union of the Holy Spirit. Also with me. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. together present God we believe that the Bible is a living word always speaking and nurturing faith as we listen and dwell awaken within us the story that we are meant to tell send your spirit to form us as a church centered in the love of Jesus amen Good morning. For this fall season, we are going to be singing a really neat song as a scripture song to introduce our reading for the day. It's called Our Stories. Dan and I will sing it all the way through, and then we'll invite you to join us. Our stories are old stories. Our stories are new. Our stories are God's stories told in bodies at time. Our stories are old stories. Our stories are no stories. Our stories are God's stories told.
morning. Today's reading is from Exodus chapter 1. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built cities, Finam and Ramses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it's a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Word of God, word of life. You may be seated. Thanks, Joni. Let's pray. God, you promise that when your word is spoken that life comes. So let life come. Amen. We need to hear this story. Thank God someone told this story. Some context to get us started. Joseph, the beloved son of Jacob, was sold into slavery by his brothers. He finds himself in Egypt and rises to leadership with the pharaoh or the king of Egypt there. And Joseph's leadership brings vision and food and prosperity to God's people, the Israelites, and also to the Egyptians. But when Joseph dies, a new pharaoh or ruler takes reign who does not know God, we hear, or Joseph's story. God's people continue to grow in number, and Pharaoh fears that they will overtake the land. So he exerts power and oppresses them. But even in slavery, we hear the people increase in number. So Pharaoh devises a way to extinguish them, to silence them. His idea, kill all newborn baby boys. His thinking in a generation or two, the life and the stories of these people will die off. Enter Shifra and Pua, two women in the work of midwifing, They are the ones who stand between the womb and the world, helping women birth life. We don't know much about them other than their names and their job. Work that is not glamorous. They can be called on any hour. They're not afraid of blood. They see life emerge with all its beauty and vulnerability. 
interesting that Pharaoh, the one with the most worldly power, goes to the ones with the least. The demand is spoken, kill all the boy babies and let the girls live. Shipra and Pua's work is to bring life, and Pharaoh asks them, demands of them, to bring death. Their response as they walk out of that palace door, we're not going to respond to Pharaoh's orders. They trust God that much that they say no. Even when threatened with their own death, Shipra and Pua believe the work of birthing life matters. They believe the way they show up in the world matters. With their own lives on the line, they defy the power that wants to control God's creative force of life. Pharaoh hears of their noncompliance and calls them back. How dare you? What has happened? Their answer is so honest and brilliant. They name what they see and believe. The Israel, Israelite women are so full of life. Babies are born before we can get there. God's propensity for life is greater than your will for death. Pharaoh cowers at their response and goes off to devise another plan. Menial birthing nurse, nurses have left the leaders speechless just by doing what they are meant to do. In the regular lives of these two women, their defiance becomes the commitment to their call. Babies are saved, and one of those baby boys is Moses, the one who will lead these oppressed people from Pharaoh's slavery. They live because these two women, their work and their lives woven into God's greater story of salvation for the world, Shipra and Pua's work has a profound effect on the future of God's people. Their seemingly regular actions are a part of God's unfolding presence in life. And their courage and their faith could have been lost in history, but someone decided to tell their story. Maybe Shipra and Pua knew that they needed to tell their community and future generations that their seemingly ordinary work impacted someone. It made a difference, and it was not without risk, courage, or faith. They defied the powers of this world. They brought life by what they did each day. And then someone wrote this story down. And then it was woven into a larger story, one tangled with all the threads of regular people encountering God and how God uses it all to write a story of love and hope for this world. As Pastor Kristen has shared with you, we will focus on this this year, Mount Olivet, until the story is told. Our Lutheran faith is anchored in the Bible, the living word, the overarching story of God made known through the lives of people and the details of life. This living word is here because the spirit of God authors it. Someone told a story and someone told someone else and eventually it was written down and we believe this word is alive moving and breathing in the particularities of your life even now, always calling us to hear of God's promise of life and always calling us to be a part of bringing life. We mess up. We get it wrong. We choose to follow other voices. We lose our way. And then... We hear again a story of human life connected with the divine, held in a love, empowered to love through the ups and downs. And the presence of the living God comes to us again, 
holding us in love and reminding us that how we live and what we do is a part of God's story. This theme, until the story is told, is spoken to you today, like Shipra and Pua. You too have a story of how you show up in the world, how you bring life. You may be thinking, oh, that's great, but it's not me. What I do doesn't matter in the big scheme of things, but it does. Just down the hall in the community room, as Pastor Kristen said, is a gallery of stories here at Mount Olivet, told with photographs and writing of seemingly insignific insignificant detail of the lives within Mount Olivet. Our invitation today and ongoing is for you to peruse that gallery, to look at the photos taken by your Mount Olivet members, read the writing written by young and old among you, the details and contributions and presence and connections could get lost in the mix, but today they become the headlines, reminding us that God chooses us to be the life force, to teach and to play music and to run technology, to grow vegetables, to pull buckthorn as one grieves, to meet someone new, to work for justice, to feed people and look for ways to house them, the way that young people lead, to meet and remember someone's name, to provide menstruation supplies in our church bathrooms for girls' and women's bodies to be supported, to stitch baptismal napkins given to those newest to God's family, just to name a few. We may never know of God's love and the details of another's life until the story is told. There are a lot of commitments in your lives, a lot of things you have to do in so many places that you are called to show up. But my question for you today is, where is it that you're invited to hear stories and to tell yours? And within the speaking and the listening for the Spirit of God to be made known to bring life. This is why we're here. This is why we are a church, a gathering of people who hear the story. And we splash water and we receive bread and wine to know again that we too matter to God and are a collection of stories of God's presence in, with, and among the daily acts that defy death and bring life. You see, God is that interested in what you do. You are not powerless. No role or place is off limit. The one who created heaven and earth, who decided that your veins should flow with life and your lungs with breath, is still among and calling us back to the living word, to these stories of struggle and strife, of justice, to remind us that life matters, that how we show up matters, that your story matters. It may take a while, so we'll be back next week to do it all again. We need to hear your story. What is your story to tell? Thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. Good morning. You, you, may you, be seated. you may be seated for a moment. Can you, is yours working? Hello, hello. Yes, go. yes. My name is Joe Davis. Uh, some of the kids I work with call me Joe Diggity Davis. You can just call me Joe Davis. I'm a man of many hats. Uh, I, I'm uh, living in North Minneapolis, which is uh, Dakota, Dakota land. And I am the son of Juliet and James Davis. My name is Dave Shear. He, him pronouns. I uh, live in Minneapolis as well, Dakota Lands, and I am the son of Barb and John. I'm the grandson of Jack and Mildred, and together we are Just, just Move, healing justice through the arts. For wherever you are on your journey. That's and yes. so the work we do with individuals and organizations, we got very excited because our big thing that we like to do with folks is to help them tell untold stories and to find um, God's story in our story. And, and so we want to just get a little curious with each other. We're going to share something that you might not know just by looking at us. So I'll start. Uh, something you might not know just by looking at me is that I come from six generations of Lutheran pastors. So keep me in your prayers on that, please, if you oh, would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray for him. Pray for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, one thing you might not know just by looking at me is although I live and work and play in North Minneapolis, I do consider that home. But I was actually born, I was talking to Laverne earlier this morning, I was born in Minot. North Dakota. Woo. A lot of people don't know that about me. Yeah. <laughs> so Pray for we, me about that one, too. <laughs> so we would like you to just turn to somebody next to you, maybe somebody that you don't know super well, and we want you to say one thing that they might not know just by looking at you. Ready, go. Maybe a minute. Not, not a long time here. Just a minute or two. All right. All right, bringing it back here. See, Joe, these stories that are in us, they're so they're they're so excited to be birthed that they once we start them it's hard to stop them. So. Yeah, look at all those smiling faces. And <laughs> yeah, hopefully they keep this practice going on beyond this time and place. What, one of the reasons why we like to do this is because what sociologists have taught us is that our brains um, need to know very quickly: Am I threatened, or is this safe for me? And this has kept us alive. So the, this ability to very quickly say, "Okay, that's a tiger that might eat me." That's a fruit tree that's going to feed me, and I need to know very quickly because otherwise it might not go very well for me. Um, and this has been really wonderful for us to develop this. It's kept us alive. But also it can get us in trouble at times because when, when Adam, the earth creature, says, hey, God, what is all this stuff? And I'm paraphrasing. And God says, well, whatever you call it, that's what it is. And so very quickly Adam says, oh, fruit tree, tiger. But then 
also Adam starts to say, oh, you shop at that restaurant, or you shop at that store. Oh, you probably voted for that candidate. Oh, you probably cheer for that football team. You probably have that sexual orientation. You probably have that gender identity or that racial identity. And guess what? We're storied beings, so we just make up these stories about each other, right? Because our, our, we can't handle an unresolved story, so I need to resolve it in my brain. The ambiguity does not work for me. So guess what? We're making up stories about all of you as we look out there. Now, <laughs> now and you're making up stories about us. So, Joe, what do we do when we, when we find ourselves in yeah. these, making up these stories? Then what? So, so one of the practices that Dave and I have, we like to call compassionate curiosity or appreciative inquiry. That's minimizing the assumed characteristics and maximizing the discovered characteristics. So how can we, instead of assuming we have the whole story figured out, allow ourselves to be surprised and to be joyful and to be curious about what we might learn about ourselves and other people. It's a lot more fun that way. Because sometimes we think we got, got it all figured out, we close the book, but what if we hold these stories lightly? and explore and experiment and go deeper, lean into how we might be surprised by our story and by God's story. That's what we want to invite you into that practice today. But today. Joe, the problem with that is it can be messy, right? It's always when you, messy. When it's you okay. invite new stories in, to even to your sanctuary, sometimes it screws up the microphones, for example. I'm just saying, you know, hypothetically. <laughs> um, sometimes it's, it's just it, we kind of run, bump into each other a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and we develop this fear. But what Joe and I have discovered, that what's on the other side of this fear is so much more amazing than whatever we're trying to, this power we're trying to hoard here or this story here that's very neat and we have it all figured out. What's on the other side of this is God's story that's so much bigger than what we could ever imagine. So our mission, should we choose to accept it here, is to be a part of God's story where we all rise up together and we, and we um, embrace our neighbors and we see the face of Christ in each person. So you're, you're ready to rise up together? We're going to rise up together here. Okay. You don't have to Gather. rise up. Just in, embody your in, spirit. Embody our spirit. Our okay. This song is called As you're rise willing up. and able. Should we teach them the... the yeah, the, yeah. We want to invite you into some movement. We're called Just Move, so we like to invite people into movement as well. So you can remain seated if you like to, or you can rise up if you feel it. But uh, yeah, we're going to teach you... Teach you uh, we don't say dance. We say rhythmic movement. <laughs> Rhythm is optional. We'll still love you. That's right. Yeah. So the words are, rise up, O oh God, with blessings on your people. Rise up, O oh God, with blessings on your people. And it's rise up, O oh God, your love's going to break the chains. Rise up, O oh God, your love's going to break the chains. And it's rise up, O oh God, with blessings on your people. And it's ra, ah, ah, and you try to the hit high note for our sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Angela or DJ Kira on the wheels of steel. Drop that beat. I question, the treasure in my chest is live enough for resurrection. Do I practice what I profess or just practice professing? When I unexpectedly beckon to the midst of the wreckage, I'm asking to be uplifted with authentic affection. We're broken, yes, irresistibly, inextricably, and separately connected. Alone and perfect. Get together, we help me back together the most perfect bridge. All right, so we're going to do this one more time. Rise Here we up. Go. Goes. Rise up, oh God, with blessings on your people. Rise up, oh God, your love's going to break the chains. Rise up, oh God, with blessings on your people. Rise up, oh you sing out really high. Everybody shout out one thing you're grateful for on the count of three. One, two, three. All right, let's rise up and worship God together. Here we go. Rise up, oh God, with blessings on your people. Rise up. Your love's going to break the chains. Here we go. Your love's going to break the chains. Rise up, oh God, with blessings on your people. Rise Hey, this is the way that we rise. Jesus will make us alive. Loving our neighbors and we love them in the name of our God. Uh, compassion, not just words, but action. Rising from the ashes, just like Lazarus from the casket. God is in the neighborhood. Get it, get it, got it good. We got this assignment. No stopping, keep shining. No, you know me, just us. Let's rise up together. Let's together rise up. Rise up. With blessings on your people, let's see the hand motions. With 
blessings on your people. Rise up. So your love's gonna break the chains. Your love's gonna break the chains. Rise up. Oh God. With blessings on your people. Rise. That he is risen. He is risen. Forgive and redeem. He is risen. Prison is free. He is risen. Risen is he. He is risen. Risen indeed. So if we rise like he rose, then we'll rise too. And though we're crying, dying, doesn't have the fun. No, 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 no. And, and neither, neither does, does destruction. destruction. We're keeping on believing in, in that Jesus, Jesus resurrection. resurrection. We practice it. Get after it. Like mathematicians master it. It happens. A gavel of compassion. God has been dropping it. All rise for the call, healing for the nations, justice for us all. Hey, hungry get to eat again, worry get to feed again. Everybody's gonna get a home and never have to wonder where they're gonna ever get to sleep again. J E S U S, bless the bless, fresh to death, seeking peace, more and more, seeking war, less and less, resurrect. He's driving the bones that need it, death has been defeated. Watch him rise up like a phoenix. Rise up with blessings. Yeah, you sound good. Your love's gonna break the chain. Rise. Look to three people next to you and say, God loves you and so do I. 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 Step to the left, step to the right, hands in the air. Keep it tight, spin around and listen to the rap. Clap, 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 do it with us. Step to the left, step to the right, hands in the air. Keep it tight, spin around and listen to the rap. Clap, clap, clap. Step to the left, step to the right, hands in the air. Spin around, listen to the rap. Come on, clap, back, time, here we go. Step to the left, step to the right, hands in the air. Keep it tight, spin around, listen to the rap. With blessings. Blessings. Sing it out. Yeah, you sound good. Here we go. Your love. Your love's gonna break the chains. Oh God. With blessings on your people. Good and gracious creator God, we thank you so much for your story of your beloved community, your story of you right here with us right now, God. We ask that we can bring all of our stories to you. The stories that are scary, stories that are heavy, stories of brokenheartedness, and grief and tragedy and trauma. We can lay them at the foot of your cross, knowing that through your forgiveness, through your grace, through your mercy, we all rise up together. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We sing. Oh, na, 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 na. Oh, na, 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 na. Oh na 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 Break the chains, bring hope and rise up Be God's people in the world Amen You may be seated All right, so speaking of untold stories, I have a story that was untold about me for a long, 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 long time. And I have discovered over the last few years um, something about myself that I didn't really know or didn't have language for. Um, I, I, about three years ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Some of you might know about it, some of you might not know about it, but this was a new revelation for me. And growing up, I always had a lot of shame about this thing because I had I didn't quite understand. I would look around in class and everyone would look at me like, what is wrong with you? And it was a neurotypical world that just didn't quite get me. 
I had a coach who one time said to me, I'm so sorry, I just didn't know how to hold your passion. I didn't know, I didn't know how to hold it. And I think a lot of times um, we have these stories, we have these passions, we have these dreams in a, in a world that doesn't know how to hold it. And in the story today, I, I see uh, this, this baby wanting to be born in a world that didn't know how to hold it. And, and a world that was so scared of it that it tried to destroy it or control it or even kill it. And so there, I think a lot of us, we've had pharaohs in our lives who have tried to, to kill it, to control it, to destroy it. And I appreciate Beth's sermon, um, so I won't say too much more other than um, that when, when God wants to birth something, God's going to find a way. Amen? So, so those of us who have these dreams that want to be born, it's going to be born somehow, some way. This, this earth that God wants to create full of shalom, the shalom enterprise for the entire cosmos, it's coming. It's on its way, and, and God is looking for co-conspirators and, and uh, subversive midwives that are willing to help birth it. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to be one of those uh, conspiring midwives. This song is called, uh, or this poem, sorry, is called, it doesn't have a name, but it's a poem. So here it is. <laughs> Ooh, Pharaoh, 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 boy, do I have a poem for him, coursing with caustic condemnation against his fear-mongering fervor and maniacal manipulation. But the truth is, I can't write it. Well, I can actually write it, but I, I can't recite it, not today. I want to write a poem about Pua and Shipra instead, names that don't get spoken, texts that don't get chosen, identities that are often targeted and stolen. I don't know what it's like to live in their skin. Because of that reason, I should never pretend, but I wonder if the courage in them that was God-given can be found living deep inside us, too, if we listen. I wonder if the cold chill in our bodies that we feel when an unjust leader asks us to carry out their will is the same sensation that the midwives were facing. I wonder if that same Holy Spirit imagination that embraced them and gave them the idea not to fight and not to flee, but to think so the Hebrew babies could be free is alive and it resides inside of you and me. I pray that their spirit is in my bone marrow, but I fear that inside me too is also, oh, I said I wasn't gonna say his name, didn't I? Okay, let me finish this poem or at least try. Friends, I know the freedom for the entire earth is on the way. The healing of a generational curse is on the way. So whether we choose to participate or attempt to annihilate, the world that God wants to birth is on the way. So let it be born midwife it the poem that's living inside of you write it the song waiting to be sung sing it the gift that you're afraid to bring bring it these will be woven into the story that god is writing my guess is shipper and pura were also frightened and my guess is we'll have more of you know who's that will be fighting outside of us and even inside of us that may be hiding but you can still do this god has done this and god will do this so let's not just tell the story, but let's live the story. I mean, for real, do this. Freedom will arrive and come alive. And the world of shalom for which we strive will sit on the birth stool for all to see. Healing Shipra and Pua and Pharaoh and Miriam and Moses and Laverne and Beth and Kristen and Joe and you and me. It's coming. It's near. Prepare or beware. It's hard to stop what's already there, or here, I should say. I guess that poem for he who shall not be named, I'll have to share it one day, but not now. After all, there's a baby known as God's future, and it wants to be born, and it needs to be born. And you and I, we will help birth it. Yes, yes, yes. We can say amen for that. Amen. <laughs> I come from an amen church, so you know, I like to say amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God, thank God, thank God that, that God is big enough to hold all of our stories, the complexity and the nuance, uh, the, the, the fullness of it. And I have a story that I want to tell, a story that, that is often untold that I, I feel I don't tell enough. That's the story of, of when I was born. Um, because my mother, when she was in the hospital, she was told that either her or myself were not going to make it. The doctors looked her in the eyes and told her that they didn't think she was going to make it. She was really sick. She had toxema. Um, and I was supposed to be born in November, or I was supposed to be born in January, but it was November. She was rushed to the hospital because of complications. 
Um, but because my mother is like one of those faithful women that we sung about earlier, um, she's always had a radical faith, a resilient faith, a revolutionary faith. And in spite of what those doctors who didn't look like her, those doctors who oftentimes don't trust a woman like her or believe her or what she chooses with her own body, in spite of that, in spite of uh, in a system where the infant mortality rate of African Americans is three times higher than white Americans, in spite of being in a world where oftentimes there's profit that comes from our suffering, there's benefit that comes from our struggle, in spite of that, she still chose God's story. In spite of this death dealing story, she chose a story of hope and life. And she said, I'm going to have this baby. And through a Caesarine section, I was born, and my mother is still here today. Thanks be to God for God's grace, for my mother's faith in God's grace. I'm here today. She always tells me when I'm going through uh, times of struggle and hardship. She says, you were here for a purpose and a reason. And she reminds me of her faith in God's grace. And that, that enlivens my faith in God's grace. And I, I come back to that story again and again and again. I know we live in a world where oftentimes we see this death-dealing system. We see these stories of hopelessness and faithlessness. And yet we have women in our lives, women in the history of the church, that remind us that we too can become midwives to this story of healing and hope and faithfulness. I want to live more fully into that story. That gets me excited. That deserves an amen. Amen? Amen. amen. And as, as an artist and a storyteller and a poet, uh, I had to write about it. So I also wrote a poem. Um, it's in, my, in one of my books, uh, We Rise Higher, if any of you have ever um, had a chance to, to get your hands on the book, but I'm going to read it here, and it invites some call and response. And so when I say, let there be, let there be, you all say, let there begin. So let's try this together. Let there be, let there be. Let there begin. Yes, and so that the call and response is about even though there may be stories of hopelessness and faithlessness in this death-dealing death -dealing society, this death-dealing system, we can still choose to live into God's story. God's story is one of, of hope and faith and new life. So let it begin. Let, let us trust in that grace. Let there be, let there be, let there begin. Always new beginnings. Even when it seems like the end, something will always begin again and again. We think we've reached the limits finished, maybe even death, but we don't know what to call a name, whatever might be next. Let there be, let there be, let there begin. What is our world if not a dream called into being? Inside every seed is everything needed to be a tree, waiting achingly to break free. Every drop of water is part of oceans, rivers, streams, and before the mightiest mountain peaks, there was only rising dust that our eyes could barely see. It's in the very air we breathe. Let there be, let there be. Let there begin. So what dream is right here, stirring in you, stirring in me? Asking to be born, asking for permission, a vision asking for provision to take shape and take form, begging you, beckoning you to not just sort of kind of do it, but to be a conduit to start a movement. And let there be, let there be, let there begin. Let there begin a story of hope, a story of healing, God's story, our story. Amen. So as we leave you today, we want you to find uh, another person next to you, and we are going to bless each other because we need to do, to do this work and to tell our story and have the courage. We need God's blessings here. So find someone next to you. If we got to move around a little bit, <laughs> make a new friend. All right. You're going to place your hand sort of towards their head. If you're intimate with them and have consent, you can even place it on their head. But, um, and you're going to speak these words. May your mind be filled with God's wisdom. May your mind be filled with God's wisdom. And go to their ears. May your ears hear the cries of God's children. May your ears hear the cries of God's children. Go to their eyes. May your eyes see the face of Christ in all that you encounter. May your, May your eyes, eyes see the, see the face, face of Christ in all, all that, that you, you encounter. encounter.
go to their mouth. May your mouth speak hope to the world. May your mouth speak hope to the world. May your feet bring good news to the nations. May your feet bring good news to the nation. May your hands serve the living God. May your hands serve the living God. Hand on the, by the shoulder, symbolizing the heart. And may your heart be filled with the compassion of Christ. May your heart be filled with the compassion of Christ. This day and always. This day and always. Amen. Amen. Are you awake, 9 o'clock? <laughs> we continue with our offering, uh, grateful for all the ways that you uh, share your stories um, and contribute to the mission and vision we have here at Mount Olivet. Many ways to give, basket, box in the back, and Venmo code. <laughs> Awaken us to the stories of faith among us and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. In the name of Jesus.
Thanks be to God. Check, check, check. 